Anybody here? Yeah, Cindy's here. I think we're live. Belinda's here. Hi. Good morning, Hello. everybody. I catch Tell, my breath. Taking a moment to catch her breath. She's been on the run this morning. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you. This is Peg Robinson and Chelsea coming to you live on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this at a later date, um, this was a broadcast on Art Joy Sharing Live. And we have a Facebook group if you'd like to join us and share your art with us as you work along. Um, so good morning, Shell. I hope you're catching your breath. I am. Okay. That was crazy. I ran up the stairs with the one minute to spare. Oh, I had to man. drive my mother today. So. Man, that's hard when you're try running at the last minute and trying to accomplish things. It's just yeah. too, too difficult. So we have Laura here and Belinda and Cindy and who else? I think that's it for right now. So good morning. Yeah. We are working on watercolor this morning. Um, and I am no expert in the field, trust me. So if, if you're a watercolorist, don't be offended by anything that I do. Um, but I am a mixed media artist, and because of that, I love to work in all kinds of mediums. And so uh, watercolor is one of those, right? That is true. I am also not an expert in watercolor. And I think Shell is still trying to get set up a little bit. Um, I've got a couple of different things to share with you. Shell, it looks like we're flipping back and forth again. Are we? Yeah, and I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, I've selected myself. Now talk and see if you flip. Okay, so it it is not flipping at the moment. Oh, well, it just flipped. Not for me. Okay. It stayed on my screen. Now, if I talk, does it flip for you? Well, it, I'm I'm watching the stream. We probably have to pull the audience. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Marie. We have more people joining us. We're glad you're here. Yes, yes, I see that. Uh, we have someone brand new to this stream, Alta. So she's a newbie. Okay, cool. Glad to see you. So um, like Peg was saying, we're both mixed media artists, but we do use uh, water-based media in mixed media. And so we're going to just work on watercolor alone today and um, see what we can do. Neither of us are, are pros, but I, I do know a lot about it. I just haven't practiced that much. So right. I had this big plan that I was going to make these, uh, these little charts that had a lot of different watercolor techniques. And then I was going to show you the charts. And then I was going to work on my piece and try to use all those techniques. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Best laid plans, right? <laughs> yeah. So I am going to work on a piece, and um, I have a special plan for it. I'm ready to go. I've got all kinds of different watercolor stuff out here. I'm sure Peg has a ton of it, too. What kind of stuff do you have out, Peg? Well, I just pulled, I just pulled some things last night. Um, <laughs> actually, somebody reminded me about the stream. It's like, oops, I need to probably pull some things out and get ready for tomorrow. Um, and I... <laughs> <laughs> I am just going to play. You know, this is this is my playtime. Um, I like to use a lot of different mediums. And I'm going to show you a couple of different types of watercolor that I have. Uh, one of which is this uh, Peerless watercolor system. Um, I just picked this up recently, so I haven't really had a lot of chance to play with it. Um, it's fun, but one of the things I'm finding out about this is it's not as intense as my good watercolors. And that's one of the things about watercolor. When they dry down, they tend to be less vibrant. So you need to be aware of that as you paint, that they are not going to stay the bright color that you're putting down. Or you, you may want to make it a little more intense as you're working. Um, but one of the things I like to have is a just a scrap piece of paper that I can clean my brush off on because I can use this for other projects later. 
and um, it helps you know keep my water a little bit cleaner too and um, if you want to if you want to be like I am which is a, a faux watercolor artist um, then I'll show you how to do a little bit of stamping and get a watercolor technique like this and let's see who's joining us we have uh, Barbara Clark is here good morning Barb um, oh yeah thanks uh, I uh, we've been playing with nails this week I think Cindy's got some pretty cool nails this week too um, and Lisa's saying yay watercolor that's good. Ooh, you got the Arteza. I'm, I'm interested in finding out about those. Um, yeah, this is brand new. Um, I'm going to try these out uh, for the first time. Very and cool. I've also got my other brushes, which are some high quality. Uh, these are Royal and Lang Nickel, um, mm -hmm. kind of mid-quality Zen brushes. Yeah. And then these are the uh, Uric brushes, which are expensive. And I keep my watercolor brushes separate from my acrylics. Right. I don't ever use them in there. I just use them only in watercolor. And the way to think about a watercolor brush is something that is fat down near the ferrule. Because what you want in a watercolor brush is you want it to be able to come really to a nice point so that you can do detail work, but you want it to be able to suck and hold a lot of water. So that's why um, a lot of people, a lot of watercolor people that I see, not professionals, but ones that I see on YouTube, maybe some of them are, use these water tank brushes that hold water inside, and then you don't have to worry about dipping as much. So um, these Arteza ones look like it comes in a lot of different sizes in this pack that I just got from them. I got a couple flats and uh, four different size, three three sizes flats and four and three sizes pointy. So we'll try those out. As far as products, what I have out, probably going to mostly use my Koi travel set because it's a good quality, highly pigmented watercolor without a high price. Um, you can get, this is a smaller set, but you can get 24 and I looked it up for $17 with free shipping on Amazon. I also have out uh, these Japanese watercolors, which are more to me like an opaque gouache type of a watercolor. I have out these liquids in case I want to use those in a little very sad looking palette. And um, then I have out my crayons, which you can always use these as a watercolor anytime. And I also have some ink tense blocks and ink tense pencils. And I have some watercolor pencils. So that's, oh, and I have some gelatos. I got gelatos out too in case I wanted to use those. So You're then, of course, cool, aren't you? I'm ready. I'm ready. I've mm -hmm. got my uh, Fabriano hot press watercolor paper. Uh huh. Is that what you're using too, hot press or cold press? Um, I have a variety of stuff out here. You know, I, I am. I'm not a snob about the paper. Um, as long as it's watercolor paper, I use it. Um, I have a, let's see, what's this one? This one is a Master Touch, which was, you know, this is a real cheap pad for two bucks. Um, Master Touch watercolor pad. And I use this for kind of like playing around, like if I stamp an image and I want to color it up. Um, these are fun things to do. And, um, I also have, this is a, another really cheap one, which is, what is this? I think this is a extra large, uh, let me put my brush down so I can then tape this. <laughs> I have I have a piece of watercolor paper down as my background because it's going to catch my splashes and stuff and I don't care. Okay, this is just a Canson uh, watercolor pad and they're fine. You know, I'm I'm just playing. I have a nice journal, which is, um, this one is by Strathmore, I think. Yeah, this is Strathmore. It's a 400 series watercolor paper. And this is where I do, you know, some watercolor play, like this kind of stuff, where I just um, 
put down watercolor. Whoop, that's not. You know, I put down watercolor and I practice lettering. Um, you know, it's it's just a fun book to play in, and it's a nice size for travel. And that's one thing about watercolor. It's something that travels really well, because um, you can pick up a little palette and a pad of paper like this and take it with you and do a lot of artwork. Absolutely. That's why I have this uh, Koi watercolor travel set. It did actually come with a brush. Uh huh. And um, it, it came with a water brush. So really, the water brush is one of those disassembling ones. Uh -huh. And so you could just unscrew it, you know, fill it up with water and screw it. Then it's got these little side things that you can uh, clean off your brush with. It has a mixing tray. Uh -huh. So this and a small spiral bound watercolor thing, and you could take it anywhere and work on art journaling without really a lot of fuss, maybe a few Posca pins. Right. Uh -huh. right. <laughs> Gotta have those um, Poscas, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I would die without them. I'm, I'm pretty sure. So just a note on the Arteza pins. I filled up a few of them. Instead of having the suction thing that's, uh, the, the valve sucks up water, it just has an open thing. Open tube. So I don't know. Our selecting is not working today. Okay. It has so an open tube. There we go. Open tube. As far as my brushes go, um, this is my travel brush. Um, this is a silver black velvet. And it, you know, pops apart and you can put it into the inside so that you're not messing with the bristles. And then this can go into your little travel palette. So um, I really, I really like this particular brush if you're going to be on the go. I usually always take a water brush because it's got the water reservoir. Um, I also like, these are real cheap on Amazon. These are, um, uh, I'll have to find a link for you guys, but, but they're, you know, what they use for their calligraphy and stuff. And um, they hold a lot of water. And that's what you're looking for with a watercolor brush is something that's going to hold a lot of water. You can get, I have uh, also the, Dollar Rowney, um, which are a nice brand too for that. But um, I just got these not too long ago and I'm playing with them and I like them. So if you care anything about what my opinion is, um, I'd say those are pretty good brushes. And I will try to find some links for you guys to put in. So who's come in? Let's see. We've got Messy table. Good morning. Good morning. We got Isla, uh, Beverly. We're glad you're all here. Queen Mabel. That's Susie. Susie. Okay. <laughs> I learned that. Susie and Vicky, the people that, you know, yeah. yeah. And so I'm, I'm working on a um, busy lane. Uh, five and a half by eight and a half piece of hot press watercolor paper. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, gonna make a card out of it because two Fridays ago at soccer, one of our players had a massive heart attack. Oh no. He went from standing there on the field to just, he just flopped down. Oh, so he, um, he needs a get well soon card. Yes, he does. We're collecting a little bit of money tomorrow night at the soccer. So um, I'm making, I'm going to make a scene. Uh, it's spring here and the cactuses are starting to bloom. So I'm going to make a cactus scene. So I started out with just a wet on wet technique using this uh, flat Arteza brush and some of my koi watercolor. And then um, just made a nice wet wash over the top half of my card. And then I sprinkled a little bit of alcohol, 91% alcohol on there to just disperse a little bit. Uh -huh. One thing about watercolor is you've got to wait. It's, it's something that is it, <clears throat> it's frustrating in the fact that you have to stop and wait for something to dry all the time. 
because the way to intensify your colors is to glaze over the top of your lighter colors. So you're making a layer, then you're letting it dry, and then you're adding another layer, and you're letting that dry. And so <laughs> that's what's frustrating to me. And the reason that I don't particularly do a lot of watercolor is because of the weighting factor. And I find I find some of that peaceful for me because <laughs> I can move to another area and you know work on something else. And that's that's one of the beauties of watercolor. When I want downtime and just kind of get lost in something, it's a real good thing for me to go to. But you know, not everybody wants that. <laughs> So what I'm doing right now is I just have an embossed image and I'm using a variety of watercolor in here. This happens to be um, a palette that I put together. Um, these are just tube watercolors that um, I have put together into my own palette and I'm using them just to add color to an embossed image. And you know, you can see that it has that lovely soft uh, look to it. So, you know, and, and like she said, you know, now some of this flower has started to dry. I can come back and I'm using my water brush to pick this up and I can just drop in a little more color to intensify the interior of my flower just by dropping that in. Ah, oh, Linda is here. Hi, Linda. Gina's here. Good morning. Good morning. Um, they're talking about a heat tool. Uh, no, your stuff, and yeah. masking fluid and salt and yeah, lots of good information. You guys, I love it when you guys help one another. This is great. Yeah, I had started. I had started this piece um, last night, and I just laid down uh, some color in the background. And I had dropped uh, what I have here on my desktop is some. This is some kosher salt, which is a little bit thicker. And what that does is it gives that um, kind of burst watercolory. You see these textural things here. That's what the, the kosher salt does. And then, you know, this morning I came down and I brushed that off. And then I started dropping. See, I can't, I just can't leave it alone. <laughs> I started dropping color in and I isn't saying the show's going to start pretty soon. But, you know, I, I, I want to get the color on the page. So I started dropping color in already. It's just one of those things. I can't help myself. <laughs> so what's going on over there, Shell? I'm doing what I call watercolor doodling rather mm -hmm. than making a um, a sketch beforehand. Yeah. Which I could have done. I'm using a light color. It's just like a very watered down ochre uh -huh. to draw my images. And then I'm going to let these dry. And then I'm going to glaze over the top. Ah. So that's how I will manage this little scene of different types of cactuses they they really are there's there's some uh beautiful 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 bright pink blooms going on on the ones on the median uh -huh. you know how they plant plant things on the median yeah <laughs> there i just as i was rushing to get home going uh 55 and a 45 trying to get here on time <laughs> Maybe no, don't I, don't break any traffic rules getting here. We can wait. <laughs> uh, I was. I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe how long this is taking. <laughs> oh it was ridiculous. God. So you crack me up. Yeah, don't don't kill yourself getting to the live stream, okay? Well, I'm alive, but I literally was panting when I got here, running up the stairs. Yeah. I bet you were. Thought I was gonna croak. Let's see what people are saying now. Um, uh, 
masking fluid. Someone told me about rubber cement. Yeah, I've I've heard of using the rubber cement too. Um, Did you guys watch the resist episode? <laughs> Talking about all the different types of resist. Linda, whose brush are you talking about? Linda's asking about what size water brush is that. I, we've got all kinds of brushes out here, so I'm not yeah. sure. Um, and they're talking about thinning. Okay. Thinning what? The probably the the masking fluid. Oh yeah, I was. I had a plan for making a cactus that had masking fluid on it, Hi. and I was gonna. Yeah, I had all these plans. They were yeah. great plans. Yeah, it didn't happen. Shelley just crept in. Good morning, Shelley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It, it's always the great plans of. Yeah. So you're still working on your embossed image? No, I'm actually working on, I'm just doing an abstract. Uh, I'm, I'm using this uh, journal page that I had started um, last night. And I, I had shown them, you know, the salt effect on there. And I was just laying some color in on here. Um, what I intend to do with this one is to doodle over the top after it dries. So, uh -huh. I, you know, it's like I usually do. Uh, as a mixed media artist, I have several things going at the same time, you know, and I'm, I do plan on showing them, you know, how I created this. But I also, along with just, uh, you know, playing with getting some color down onto this uh, Abstract background is basically what this is, and I'll doodle. I heard a, I heard a name for that technique. I, I guess I wanted to talk a little bit about other uh, water mediums, not just watercolor, because um, you can use a lot of different inks that are uh, water movable. And, you know, you don't have to go out and buy watercolors if you don't have watercolors. You can use a lot of the things that you already have in your stash and you know that's mainly what I want to get across to you is that if you have some things and watercolor looks interesting to you then play with what you have and see if it, this is something that you would enjoy I always encourage you to um, use what you have right absolutely so I think this needs brightening up a little bit. So I probably need some more yellow, yellow green. But see what what I do is I'll I'll do backgrounds like that. Like here's a here's a abstract background that I started because I was going to do a landscape. So I might start with a piece of watercolor paper, tape this down to the table so it's not curling all over the place and, you know, just wet my paper and then lay in some color so that I can get my background going. And that's kind of what I did here. You can see my uh, tablet is actually taped around the edge so that my pages won't curl. And I did the whole background, and now I'm laying in some color on top of that. The one with the orange tip and the blue on before that. Orange tip and blue. Do you mean this one? This is a this is a Dollar Rowney Aquafine. This is an FA eighty five round. Um, so, something to say about watercolor brushes is that 
across the industry who make watercolor brushes, there is not standardization. Right. So you might have an eight that you just love and you go to buy it in a different different sort of brand and all of a sudden it's the same size as the 12 you had. You just never know for sure until you touch the brushes. So unless you're gonna buy a specific one that somebody recommended online or something and they gave you a link, you don't necessarily get what you think you're gonna get. Right. So for watercolor brushes, probably better to go buy it at the store. Unless you're like me and you just want to take a chance because, you know, I've never I've never seen these particular brushes in a store. Um, so, yeah, you know, I decided I wanted them and I was going to give them a try. Well, so far, all I've used is the uh, Arteza water brushes. I use the, uh, the fat flat one. There are six in this set. And then now I'm using a fine, I think this is the finest one to do my watercolor doodling with. So I'm making some prickly pears, I'm making some burial cactuses, I'm making some organ pipe cactuses, making some saguaros, and of course, the ever-present Hocketeo. Yes. Because it is the Paper Octeo Studio right, right. here. So that's what I'm doing. Cool. Maybe a taller organ pipe back here. Why not? Got to think about composition. Looking pretty flat here. <laughs> it's like the cactuses are marching across the paper. And the color that I'm using is just ochre and maybe a little bit of khaki type of a color because I do plan to glaze over that. Glazing is a wet into dry technique. We haven't talked anything about techniques at this point, have we? No, no, but I mean, there, watercolor is a very deep subject. And I mean, if you're really interested in it, I do recommend that you take a couple of classes. I have taken a few classes um, <laughs> and you do learn by doing, you know, and that's probably why I took the classes just to force myself to do more. Um, Cause you, you need to, you need to play. Everybody needs to play. So I'm going to, I'm going to move this one aside and let it dry a bit because um, what I have here is a lot of, a lot of blobs of color. And I can come back in and do some more color over the top. I can doodle over this. Um, it just becomes a piece that is something to play with. And that's what I'm talking about. When I do something in, uh, times I'll start with just a background like this and put, put the color down and then I'll come back and do some doodles and things over the top. Um, let's see if I have any other examples. Um, something like this, where I've actually done a reduction and pulled some of the color away and then did doodling over the top in there. So, what I have here in this journal is a quick sketch that I had done using, um, this is a Varsity, and it's just a, a cheap pen with a stick. ink in here is water soluble you can come back with your brushes then and move that and it, it will move on your page and blend out and make a really nice image 
So it doesn't, it no longer looks like a pen sketch. It becomes a watercolor. And that's kind of fun. So if you're doing something like this, where you're just moving the, the ink, it can become, show you what that looks like as a finished piece. So these are, these are practice pieces. Um, it can become a one color study like this where I have sketched out an image and I've come back with a brush and you know it doesn't matter whether you're using a water reservoir whether you're picking up you know with a brush like this as long as you are wetting that you can move that ink about and create a watercolor effect which I find a lot of fun and you know when you're when you're traveling or something like that these you know grab a couple of pens and a water brush take that along because that's a fun thing to do. That was a technique that I really, really enjoyed back in the day with watercolor pencils. And um, watercolor pencils are like, just like, look like a, a pencil. But then when you write it down onto the paper, then at any time in the future, you can let it bloom out. And so I used to do stamping. This is obviously from Stampin' Up! because that's the company that I worked for for about 10 years. And um, I would do that as like just pure entertainment. Just have some stamped images and watercolor on them with the pencils. And then later Stampin' Up! came out with the... Uh, the crayons in their 48 colors back at the back in the day and mm -hmm. i was in love with those which i have since switched to neo color twos which i absolutely adore because they're more water soluble than the ones from stampin up i have not lost my love for <laughs> watercolor crayons by any means right right i adore them no, I, I, I do love Neo Colors too. We've got some new people joining us. Um, I see Ian has joined us and Jules has joined us. Um, I want to say good morning to everybody. Hello, hello. So, Linda, did I answer your question about the brushes? Trying to keep up here. Good luck with that. <laughs> Linda says, I have a hard time picking a focal point or image to go with the colors I pick. Probably the solution to that is to pick a focal image and then go with the colors that it is. Yeah. Or pick a paper that you're planning to use with your mixed media and then use the colors that's in it. It's kind of what I do. Okay, I'm glad, Linda. I'm, I'm glad we were able to help you out there. So, I told you I was going to show you how I was creating this. So, I need to find that image, don't I? <laughs> or do a different one. Maybe I'll do a different one. That's what I'll do. Um, okay, so here is a cute little ceramic pot. All right, this one happened to be a watery can. So I've got a little ceramic pot, and I'm going to use another water soluble item that many of you own already, which is the distress ink. Okay. And this happens to be weathered wood. And honestly, since I'm doing the pot, I'm going to switch it up. I was going to use weathered wood because I was going to do the, the can. But I think I'm going to go to a brown 
because it's a pot, a ceramic pot. And it could be any color because it could be glazed. But <laughs> I'm going to use a brown because typically they're uh, the clay color. So I'm just going to stamp this image on an ATC. And you can see that looks like a stamped image, right? Sure it does. Now I want to find some masking paper. And you can get Frisket also in the film form like this. And it, it's just a sheet like this that has adhesive on the back. And I'm going to use a permanent ink on the Frisket because what I'm going to do is create a mask. So I'm going to use Stazon. And I'm going to, whoops, take the lid off of it. <laughs> I'm going to take the lid off of it and I'm going to stamp that same image onto my Frisket. And I'll set that aside and let it dry because that's a slick surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim that out. But in the meanwhile, where I have this, I'm going to take my Peerless watercolor. And I'm going to flip through here and find something that I want to use on my pot. And these are just little sheets of intense watercolor. And you can see down here at the bottom where I have tested them out to see what actual color comes out with these. Um, and when you buy these, even though it says um, it's a complete set, it's not. Um, I found that out the hard way. So make sure that what you're getting is what you think it is because you can see I have a lot of empty spots because I bought the quote unquote complete set and it was not complete, um, which, you know, as much my error as theirs, I, I should have done a little more investigation. But I like this uh, mahogany brown. So I think I'll... I think I'll pull that out. And I want to blend that with maybe a little bit of an orangish tint. So I'll pull that out. And, you know, you can set up, like if you're going to travel, you can set up a card like this with little pieces of the colors that you're going to use and just take that one card with you, which is what I thought was kind of cool because this was... Um, this was what they call the travel palette. And so when I bought the travel palette, I thought the color was in the travel palette. It's not. It's all these blank pieces of paper. So just be aware of that also, that the travel palette is blank and you have to buy the set of colors to go into it. I'm learning and you guys are benefiting from my stupidity. Um, okay. Let's see what people are saying. What are they saying? Well, Ian's answering some of Linda's questions. Nikki is here. Hi, Nikki. Um, so that's good. Glad you joined us. Okay, so I'm just going to, because this is like it is, I'm going to switch to a different brush. Um, this is just a cheap uh, creative mark. I can't read it. My bifocals are not good. M-I-M-I-K round number two. Okay. So I'm going to wet my brush, and I'm going to come and grab a little bit of that mahogany, and it just takes a swipe like that to get some color on. And then... Where the stamp has uh, hash marks and things, that's where the image shadow is. So the artist that 
created the stamp has already done a lot of the hard work for you. So you can just go in with your darkest color where that um, the hash marks and things are and pull your color towards the center and get a little more water and you can float that color across. Grab a little more of the intense color and go back in where those marks are. And it, to me, this is a real simple uh, method for creating color on those stamped images. And I'm going to want to let that dry a little bit because I want to put a shadow in under the lip of this. And, you know, so I'm just going to relax a moment. And while that's relaxing, oh, the other thing that you guys might, might want to think about that I like, this is a, a rest for your brushes. So um, they're not sitting directly on the... That you just set it on the rest and that goes on your table like so and I think that this is a good item to have it saves and preserves your brushes so what I was going to do was grab my scissors and I'm going to cut out my mask and what are you doing, Shell? Well, I was going to um, get out my, yeah, I guess I'm not. <laughs> I was going to see if I could zoom so that you could see what I'm doing. I started my glazing. Okay, cool. And I was going to zoom it in, but I don't have any controls for my camera because I didn't put those out before I started the hangouts. Oh, dear. So, Okay. I've got out one of my fat brushes. This is a number 14 Uric, the 6150R, and it has a very fine tip. And these, most of these are kind of dry now, and you, they look really pale. When you have a watercolor, the first layer is always pale. And so you can let this dry, and then you can do something called glazing, which is to take a wet watercolor, and I'm just using my little mixing palette to pick up different colors so that I can decide if they're what I want. And then you can go back in and start adding back in color to intensify as well as correct any color. So I intentionally made these um, warm colors like um, I, I used mostly uh, ochre type of a color intentionally when I was drawing them so that I could go back in and I could add color. And then another thing that you can do is you can wipe off your brush. And if there's a place that you don't like it or you want to add a highlight, you can also remove color. So if I want this highlight on the tops of these um, organ pipes and down in this section where sun might be hitting, I can remove some of the color. So I can do this glazing process over and over until I'm happy. So just like mixed media, you can continue to add your layers over and over and over until you're satisfied. So it is similar to mixed media in that way. And you can also add crazy colors. Say you want uh, a little bit of pink because you think that, that there might be a little bit of sun shining on the tops of these that might give you a little bit of a brighter color. You can add those in. Another thing that, uh, probably should have mentioned is if you're going to work with a brush like this, you should have two jars of water. You should have one for your clean and one for your dirty. And that'll save you a lot of time and a lot of color muddying when you clean your brush. Because I clean my brush a ton when I'm watercoloring. That's true. I actually have three uh, water on my table. Um, but that's because sometimes I'll use 
bleach and salt and things like that. And I don't necessarily want that in the rinse water. Yeah. I don't have out any bleach, but I did have out salt. And I, but then I remembered that when you're applying salt, you need to let the water, the watercolor slightly dry. Yeah. So that it's just tacky. And then you apply the salt and then you have to let that dry. And that's not very conducive to uh, life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Yeah, it's a lot of drying. We do, we do a lot of drying. That's why we share the screen, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, Non-stop drying here. So far, I haven't gotten out my heat tool. Yeah. I don't generally use a heat tool on wa watercolor simply no. because I often use Frisket. And Frisket is rubbery, and if you heat it up, it's going to soak into the paper. And then you'll, you know... You'll have problems. <laughs> I'll just say that. You'll have problems. Yeah. I, I'm I have it. multiple problems for multiple reasons. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So let's see. I need to go back to something a little uh, orangish to add to this. This is mighty orange, so I might blend with a little bit of. Well, oh, terracotta is orange. Yeah, but it's not that orange. <laughs> <laughs> not quite that orange. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the orange yellow and the mahogany. And blend that out. You seem to be having trouble remembering which was supposed to be the dirty and which was supposed to be the clean water. Uh oh. I have the buckets. I'm following <laughs> my own instructions and then I keep putting my brush in the wrong one. Oh uh, well. Yeah, it is what it is. So, anyway, I think I am ready to mess that off. So I've cut out my, my little mask piece. And it's just a, a little clear piece like this. And I'm going to put it down. And you can see... Uh, when you're doing something like this, you want to put a place where this pot or whatever is sitting because you can't just stamp that and have it floating out there in the air. You got to put, put a ground down for that to go on. So, Oh, not in my world. You can't. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm masking off my little pot. And then I have... A lot of little bitty, little bitty stamps, little fun stamps, little greenery, little, these are all from Art Impressions, I think. Yeah, I think they're Art Impressions, but I, I just thought they were the cutest little stinking stamps, right? And, you know, you can, you can just take your brush. You don't have to have stamps. You can take your brush and you can pick up some color if you want to to give the appearance of some foliage, which is fine. But I think the stamps are stinking cute. <laughs> they are. They are stinking cute, right? And with them, what I do is I'll mix up a color. And let's see, what do I want to use here? I have a green out on my palette. 
but I think I want a little I want to add a little bit of blue to that um, and you guys are probably going to ask me well, what color is that what color is that um, this green is a uh, oxide hmm. oxide chromin from good grief I wish I did better notes for myself. Let's see. These are core watercolor. These are Daniel Smith watercolor. Um, and these are both really good quality watercolor. Um, so, you know, if, if you want to spend a little bit more money and want to, you know, play with watercolor, I can recommend them. As far as I'm concerned, I like them both. Um, but that's just my opinion. And everybody's got an opinion about watercolor, evidently, because I've heard lots of opinions. But, like I said, you don't have to buy watercolor. You can use other... So what I did was I took that, I took that color that's on my palette, and I'm just painting on here. And... You can see that this looks pretty moist. You can stamp off if you want to and just remove a little bit of that before you go to your image. And then you can stamp that down on here. And you see it creates this little foliage look. <laughs> on my pot. You guys should see outside my window. What's going on? The neighbors they have this dog and i think i think it's called a portuguese water dog right oh yeah it's this and it, and i don't know if it's a giant or if it's supposed to be that big but it's black and it's furry it's like like furry curly oh. curly furry yeah and it's tall and it keeps coming over to the wall. There's like a probably a six foot block wall in between our 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 backyards, and it comes over and it gets its little paws right up there, and it's looking over the the wall at our dog in the back backyard. Yeah. His name is is a uh, Scout, and he just is hilarious. If I go out there to feed Teddy, our our dash hound that's out there, um. Scout comes and he looks over the wall. <laughs> He's hilarious. <laughs> He's completely cracking me up at this point. Fun. Big goofy dog. That's why I like to sit by the window, but then also in the afternoon I can't work in my studio. Or I can't film in my studio. I can work for that reason yeah i wish i had a window i'm in the basement yeah having a window is nice i used to be in a closet and uh this is so much better i bet i bet so what's going on in the chat i don't know holly has joined us good morning holly holly lives in the desert doesn't mean she has to like it <laughs> Uh, oh, I love it. I love the desert. And they're talking about they're talking about watercolor artists. We've got some watercolor artists in our chat, in case you guys don't know it. Because if you guys have seen uh, Gina Aaron's watercolor, yes. Uh, Ian Jackson, yes. Um, there's a number of people in our group here who do beautiful watercolor. I've seen uh, Cindy Utter's watercolors. They're beautiful. Um, you know, so if you don't know each other, if, if you're new to some of these people, check out their channels because there's a lot, of, a lot of good content out there for you. So what I'm doing is I'm just building up, building up the layers. You guys see that? Mm 
And I continued to do that. Um, I think I want to add some florals now. So I've got a couple of little uh, different things that look kind of like delphinium. And I'm going to pick a, let's see, I think I'm going to, I don't know if I want a green blue or if I want to, I might mix a little bit of the Mayan, I don't know. Let me see what this looks like. That's mighty bright blue. So I might mix a little bit of the darker. Uh, this is a phthalo. phthalo. I mix that in. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. And I kind of clean off my brush on my extra paper. And then I'll come in and add those stamped florals. And I can take my brush and just extend that out a little bit. And then I've got another little stamp that's got um, teeny tiny dots. And I think I'm going to do that. And I've got a little bit of a twin magenta out here. So I think I'll do these. These just look like little tiny flowers, little tiny flowers in the bouquet. And then for a final touch, I'll probably come in and do some shadowing around the pot once I uh, lift the um, mask off of here. So I'll pull the mask. So I can see my image. There's my little flower pot. And I will get, I've got some, ooh, I like this. I've got a color called Moon Glow, kind of a purpley color, which is a, a nice color for a shadow. And I'm going to water that one down quite a bit because it's a shadow. And I'm just going to put a little shadow around the, edging of my image here. I got really quiet. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm working on my acatillos. <laughs> Basically, acatillos are these brown sticks, and then they have these very dark green, tiny leaves. Instead of having like a branch, like a you know, it branches out like a tree. All the branches start at the bottom and go straight up with a little bit of a, you know, this way. But then when they bloom at the very top, the leaves turn to a red. So you end up with these blooms on the top. So cool. that's what I'm making, just like that. Sometimes there's more than one and they come out the side like that. I love them. They're the coolest. They're your favorite, aren't they? They are. They're strange. They're very different than what you see, you know, everything else. So I'm just dotting, dotting, doing like a wet on dry. These are all dried out now. Kind of. Kind of? 
kind of sorted. Yeah. So there's my Ocotillos. Cool. And I got to work on some of my other stuff still. It's a process. It's a process. Lock gates and left the lambs out and the dogs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Like a red hot poker. Ian saying. Oh dear. Holly's leaving. Bye, Bye Holly. Holly. Maria says the cactus cacti are looking good. Thank you. And Barb says, Holy lambs. <laughs> you might you know, this it's funny. It's it's not funny, but it's funny because you know, we're talking about uh, Easter Sunday and lambs. <laughs> That's crazy. What I think it's funny is that Easter is on April Fool's Day. Yeah. That's hysterical. I, d I didn't even realize that until you said it. Yep, it's funny. I saw something, I think it was on Pinterest. Or maybe, I don't know, somewhere. You know how you can get those little Easter eggs that uh, are shaped kind of like little tiny footballs and they're in in foil, like light-colored foils and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Somebody Favorite. posted that they took green grapes, they unwrapped all the chocolates, took green grapes, wrapped them in the little foils as an April Fool's. Yeah, that that would not be no, not the same as chocolate at all. <laughs> it would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Your kids would open those things and like, oh, wow, that would They're be saying, funny. "Where's the chocolate? Like, what Where's happened here? Chocolate? This isn't right." Oh my gosh! I mean, you'd keep the chocolate. You know, you'd still give them the chocolate. It's just an April Fool's joke. Yeah, it would be very funny. Very, very funny. Okay, so so after they're crying and saying, "Where's the chocolate?" Then you give them the chocolate, huh? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, again, I, unless you ate it all. Oh man, which <laughs> could happen. Yeah. Well, that could happen. You know, it's kind of like that stuff that's supposed to go in the Christmas stocking, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. I think the caption on the post was something like, it's a good thing my grandkids don't live nearby or something like that. Yeah. Like, oh, you're mean. You're mean, mean. <laughs> but it would be funny. We all have to agree it would be funny. Yeah, well, yes and no. It'd be funny <laughs> if it was happening to somebody else, but don't do it to me. <laughs> <laughs> you like my chocolate too much. Now, if somebody messed with my Cadbury mini eggs, they'd be in big trouble. I love those Cadbury mini eggs. Oh, yeah? Only come around around Easter time. Cadbury in general, I think they have a very delicious chocolate. Oh. Although I think some American company bought them. Bought Cadbury? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Someone who lives in England can tell tell us if that's true or not. Like Nestle or something, I think. Nikki is saying. Gina was on the treadmill. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> breathe, Gina, breathe. And... Elaine says Cadbury, yum yum. Yes, delicious. They're yeah, the best. And Nestle's. And Nestle's, they say. Yep, that's who bought the. Uh, that's who bought Cadbury, I think. Working, working, working. 
I need a stick. We need some more of this bright. Your, bright. Uh, this is looking really nice, though. Thank you. Bright, bright, bright green. It's a little bit too much. Gonna need some more flowers too. Gonna have some flowers. Some of the other things that I like to add, um, this is a white opaque Copic that I like to add to my watercolor. Um, white's a little bit difficult <laughs> when you didn't leave any on the page. So and there's always Posca pins. There's Posca pins for doodling, yeah. I'm going to um, add Posca pin highlights to mine when I'm done. That's my plan. There's also, you know, the good old, um, what do you call these, gel pins. Yeah. The, they work the too. Pins, yeah. And the other, the other thing that I like, um, this is my uh, metallic watercolors because I do like to add a little bit of shimmer sometimes. I, I just can't imagine it. You adding shimmer? Oh, I know, I know, right. So uh, I probably need to add a little bit of that in here. Let's see what this looks like. Gonna need to add some shadows to these. Crazy cactus party. Now you got quiet. Yeah, I'm painting. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens, isn't it? Um, trying to read the chat too. The words are too tiny for me today. I can't read them. Ian's talking about gouache. What yeah, using? I, I, yeah, not a fan of gouache for some reason. I think these Japanese uh, um, tambi something. What is it? Zombie. Whatever they're called. I think they're gouache. <laughs> they they are very opaque. Um, actually, that's one of the watercolors I'm giving up. And and I think these pans are actually made by them too. These. Um, pearlescent ones because mm -hmm. they also have that same sort of quality they they take over if you get a little bit too much going on there so you kind of have to be judicious in what you're doing with it can i say that word judicious judicious i think that's the dirty water and this is the clean water I'm not sure though <laughs> Having water problems, I tell you. Anyway. How are we doing on time? Um I've got twenty minutes left and mine's not even beginning to be done. Hope everything worked out for you, Holly.
just gonna have to speed it up, I guess. Can't really speed up watercolor. No, it, it takes time, but that's okay. You know, um, that's the beauty of watercolor to me is that you get into a zen-like thing and just relax. Yeah, I haven't really relaxed today. No, no, definitely no relaxing. <laughs> I'm just, I'm starting to do a little bit of doodle on top of this. I don't know how far I can go um, just because there are areas of this that are still wet. Um, so we'll see what I get out of here. And when I do the doodling, I like to use different size pens too, because um, I like I like the variation in the width of the line. I find that more interesting. Definitely. I could probably fuss with this forever. I just decided. Keep glazing in more colors until the end of time. <laughs> till the end of time. Yeah, like in this purple. Sometimes it's fun to, you know, where the watercolor puddles on the edge and you get a little bit of a hard line sometimes it's fun to follow that around with your doodle you know especially if you're doing an abstract doodle like this um because you you get a different image or a different idea of what this is what it's going to be i find that interesting and fun to do And I'm just, you know, I'm taking the pen and I'm just following along some of the, those puddles of color in just a, you know, a random squiggly way. Not, not necessarily following the line perfectly. I don't want a perfect line. I want more of a random. And sometimes I even go back over the line that I created the first time and do a double line because it, it also adds something to the So, let's see. Marie's leaving. Bye, Marie. Um that you'll look and see the final pieces later. She says she's getting too old to whack the weeds by hand. Yep, I am definitely with you there, Holly. <laughs> no wha by hand whacking. I remember when I was young, you know, getting out the sigh and actually doing that. <laughs> you remember you don't want to do that anymore, right? I remember I don't want to do that. You're right.
So. So you're doodling on painting. Don't forget to click. Oh, thank you, Ian. He's reminding people to do the thumbs up. That's sweet. Yes. I think people forget, actually. Sometimes. Because it's live, they don't remember to go back and do that. Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah. And honestly, guys, you know, if you if you guys have links to your watercolor stuff, put them in. Um, you know, let people know where they can find more information on watercolor. Because, um, like I said, I I am not the official on watercolor. I just play with what I enjoy doing, and. There's a lot of information out there. You know, uh, um, I was doing a, what do they call that, Skillshare class with a watercolor artist, and it helps, you know, to, to follow other people and see what everybody else is doing. Because, you know, how do you become your own self and, and do your own thing if you're not experimenting, right? So that's what I do is I just play. And then sometimes I stumble on something that I think is, you know, you uniquely mine. And sometimes I'll try techniques that other people are showing me how to do. And, you know, that's how we all learn and grow. Shadows. I think I need a smaller brush. Can I go with this one? What are you doing, Shell? I'm switching brushes. Yeah. To a smaller pointier one so that I can add some shadows just on one side and at the bottom of these cactuses so that they look like that the light source is up here. So they need to have a shadow so I can I can um, wet and dry and then blend the edges with a little water. Uh-huh. Just so that you they seem as if they're more dimensional. Yep. I'm gonna end up adding like spikes and things using a white pen, I think. Oh cool. I have a white watercolor couple different white watercolors and maybe I should try that instead of just going right to my pens but you know I like those pens <laughs> I do like them they are my friends they are my only friends Holly's saying she wasn't wasn't good at watercolor in high school so she kind of gave up you know we all we all have things that just didn't seem to work when we were younger and if it's something you think you might like, go back and try it. You know, I I wasn't sure I liked watercolor at all because it's it's one of those mediums that moves, and you know I can make a big mess in a hurry. <laughs> and, messes are fun. Well, sometimes they're fun and sometimes they're messes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and and so a lot of times I just wasn't sure about doing watercolor either and then the more I play with this stuff the more I'm enjoying it like I said to me it, it's feeling very zen like and very calming I can use some of that in my life I've been watching uh, CC's creations yeah for and morning watercolor videos and hers are very simple you know it's some uh, watercolor staining and then some doodling most often but that's how she's relaxing in the morning when she gets up and it's but a good exercise to start the day with that's what i yeah. thought was cool and not only that but if you're watching her it's great because 
um, she's playing that really calmative music and you can work right along with her as she's doing that. Well, I haven't been able to figure that out. I never can make it to anyone's lives. I never know when anything's alive. But <laughs> I don't think she's doing it live. I think she's just doing it and posting it. Oh, is she's not doing it live? No, but I watch. Don't you ever watch videos while you're working on stuff? No, because I'm generally filming. If I'm working, I'm filming because we'll turn on I, got, I gotta put a video up every other day. I don't have time to be messing around. <laughs> yeah, that's that's ambitious for sure. Well, hey, that's how you grow your channel. Yeah. Maybe some year I'll grow up and do that. I don't know. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just playing. Yeah, playing is good too. It just all depends on what your goals are. Not sure what my goals are. So I'm doing what I'm doing. Well, my goal this week has just been to get home from traveling and pack for the next trip, which reminds me I won't be here next week. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, because I'm off to St. Louis. So I'm going to go down and take a class with uh, Gwen LaFleur. Cool. If you guys have seen her work, um, or even if you haven't seen her work, check it out because she is a great artist, does stencils for Stencil Girl, and has beautiful, beautiful work. And a couple of my friends are going, and I think it should be a great time. Sounds fun. So that's the story of my life. I've been on the go, and then um, this week I was putting more stuff together in my studio because I got some new stuff from Ikea. And um, so I'm rearranging again. I started the, the spring sort of my art supplies that I will be, you know, putting out <laughs> for sale because I've decided those are not the things that I want to keep in my studio. And yeah, I somehow managed to keep busy. And you keep busy too. Yeah, I have to um, uh, clean up my studio very very soon like before the weekend so that i can put a bed in here for guests who are coming on saturday oh yeah yeah that guess <laughs> yes those pesky guests keep showing up yeah i don't know if i'm gonna have any guests i So I could probably do the live show by myself. I mean, we're missing a lot. I don't know. Is that a problem? You can invite somebody to come and join you. I don't have any friends. Oh, come on. <laughs> don't. I bet I bet you we can find you somebody to join you. Yeah, maybe. I bet you we can. If you want to do it live, do you want to do a live next week? Well, I just think we should have a live. I feel like we've like missed way too much. Okay. What we're really going to do it. We should do it. You know? Well, you know what I'm saying? I think we need to find somebody to help you out because it's a lot to do on your own. Perhaps. I also don't know what the subject would be. Do you guys want to suggest something you want to see? Well, I can do most anything. You know, when you were gone, I had um, Cindy come and join me, and that was fun. So, yeah, I remember that. You guys did glue books. Grab and glue. You've got, you've got your group of people that you did your... Um, what it, what's that uh, Canvas Corp stuff with? Maybe one of them? I don't know. 
I have to think about it. Okay. I haven't thought about it yet. Yeah, well, you were gone. I was gone. We haven't really talked about a lot of this, so we'll get yeah. it figured out. We haven't had time to think about it. It's just been too busy. Yeah. Oh, springtime in the desert. This is looking good. Right. Yeah, and mine's actually starting to come together as a something floral. I don't know. <laughs> it, it still needs a few things. I think I need to change my pen now to something different. I went back to this Arteza um, Fine Point water brush, and it's working pretty good for me. You like them, huh? I do. I, I think they're nice. How do you think they compare to the other water brushes that you have? I like that it's easy to fill, and this this push button thing in the middle is yeah. really easy to get the water to come out. Like, I don't have to push very hard. It's like a button. Uh huh. I like that. Because my other ones, these other ones like this, I, I have this kind and I have this kind. And I have to like really, to get any water to come out of this thing, I have to really push. Mm -hmm. And also to fill it, I think this is one of the ones, to fill it, I have to squeeze and, you know, I have to like slurp it up. Makes that noise. <laughs> I hear you so I'm liking these Arteza ones, and I like the fact that there's multiple sizes, and also that you get the flats and the points, which is nice. I'll put my uh, link in the description box below if you guys want to order some, because I have an affiliate link from them for some reason. They well, gave it to me. <laughs> and I guess. Uh, I, I, I demoed some of their uh, acrylics when I was doing gel printing. Yeah. They sent me a pack of those acrylics, and they, they're like, yeah, here's this affiliate link. I'm like, okay. So did they send you a pack of the brushes? No, I bought the brushes. I bought the brushes before they ever contacted me. Uh -huh. And I just, they were just still in the package because I hadn't gotten them out. Uh -huh. but I think I'm going to – I'm ready for de detailing on this thing, I think. Because we're running out of time, and I need to stop fussing with it. So it's uh, yeah. it's it's okay. I'm gonna add some. I think some. Um, maybe I'm gonna use some brush, some watercolor pencils or ink tense pencils, maybe just to add a little bit of detailing, and then maybe oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I need to do this or not. I was just thinking it might be nice to have a little bit more shadow control here on some of these taller. Does that make it stop looking never... like a water? I don't know. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Maybe I should just do it with brown or gray or something. Brown. These pencils are kind of a pain. I can't ever figure out which things are which. That's really dark. Uh, this one. That'll work. All right, I'll just add. And then I could activate this because this is a water soluble medium if I wanted to. Mm hmm. But, um, I don't know if it's necessary. I just was thinking a little pencil detail might be nice. Maybe just to bring some of that, like, you know, they, these type of cactuses, these saguaros have these, uh, these lines in them, you know? And then they have little, they have little things like this. Making crazy mouth noises. Yeah. 
Okay, I don't know if you I'm guys just can see. I can't zoom in because I forgot to turn my camera things on before I went on my crazy driving trip. I'm just adding a little shimmeriness. Shimmeriness. To this one. With my um, metallic watercolors. Good plan. I have this. It's kind of a, a coppery gold, which I like a Rose lot. Gold. And I'm just um, edging a little bit on the leaves that I have doodled. Just to add a little something, something, something. One of the things that I learned about watercolor by taking classes was to use um, tissue for your pickup. I was trying to use um, paper towel and baby wipes and all kinds of other things. Well, they just don't work real well on watercolor, but tissue paper works great. I learned that one too from somebody, but I can't remember what it was, but like using, you know, nose tissue. Mm -hmm. In case they don't know what you mean. By, or toilet tissue. Like, you know, the, the yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I like the I like to add the shimmer in here. I, you know, until it dries, you don't really see it much, and it's still it's still drying. I don't know if I can get it up here where you can see it. Get some no. shimmer is hard to do on camera. There, I think you're catching. Yeah, I have to twisty turny, twisty turny. Yeah, twisty turny. But you can see over here where it's wet. You can't really, can't really tell as much. And then my, I think these are pretty much dry now. There's my little ATCs. My watering can and my little um, clay pot. And then this was the one I was playing with to start with, which was just, you know, an embossed image. I need to put some shadow on that because I think this is dry in here. Let this dry a little bit more before I go back to it. Maybe even put a little bit, let's see. I, think I like that moon glow purpley color again for the shadowing. It's a gorgeous color. Glad I got that one. I'll well, keep that one. Don't put it in the the sale pile. <laughs> no, no, no. This is my pan of good watercolors, so it's not going anywhere. The ones that are going out of here are probably those Gonzai Tombi or whatever they're called. Yeah, I think that's it. Gonzai Tombi. That's the ones I have right here. Yeah, I'm I'm just not a real fan of them. You know, and other people swear by them. They think they're great. And, you know, it, that's that's the thing about trying different things is it's it's all. It's all you are asking about paper earlier. This is just some uh, cardstock. This is not watercolor paper at all, because I think I started this just to. Um, 
make a greeting card and then decided later to turn it into a watercolor because I had the image already embossed. How are we doing on time? Are we about out? Are we are out of time. Yeah, we are. All right. Well, I'm about done mostly with this. So Holly says, beautiful watercolor, ladies. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Ian, you, Ian, you crack me up, buddy. Um, thank you, Vicki. <laughs> uh, uh, my nails were looking so bad I had to do something. So, yep. Um And Pat's just getting here. Hi, Pat. Yeah, it's always better late than never. You can always do the replay. It's no big deal. Um, and yeah, Ian, I get that. I get that. But you know, the the Japanese can keep them. <laughs> You know, sometimes sometimes it just isn't your thing. Yeah, I'm fine with them. I'm keeping mine, but yeah. Um, well, you know, it it's you watch other people and they recommend things and you try them and you as an artist you decide what you like. I really like the the transparent quality of watercolor. That's what I like about watercolor. So when I get something attracted to it just my own personal thing yeah you know and i agree with you i i think that uh it's kind of silly to um have a watercolor that's not transparent but i use them for other stuff i guess in mixed media so i don't use them directly for watercolor so it doesn't really matter to me Right. And in, in, in that instance, I can see why you're saying, you know, they're, they're fine for you. I, I get it. Yeah. It's just, um, for, but, for me, watercolor is not my primary um, medium. No, me neither. Even though I like to play with it, it's not my primary. And so when I get it out, I want it to have the... The, the qualities of watercolor that I'm looking for. The watercoloriness of it? Yeah. Yeah. You're saying it better than I am, which is <laughs> somebody needs to say it right. <laughs> oh, man. Some days I can talk and some days I can't. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> So do you want to show what you did? So uh, and I'll show what I did, and then we'll be done. We we'll out of here. Sounds like a plan. I was just squiggling around with my pen here, trying to do a little last-minute doodling. And um, these work pretty good. These are just those cheap uh, dollar store R2 pens. Um, but yeah, this is the the you know, abstract doodle blob <laughs> in my journal. It has the, the shimmery colors on it. And this is embossed card, which is still drying. And then these are the two little um, ETCs that I created. So that's it for me today. What did you get? Well, I'm trying to take the tape off here so I can show you. <laughs> you know, a little difficulty with tape right now. Uh oh. But, there we go. That's good enough. So, um, this is all I finished. But 
it will be good for the card that I need to make. A nice big card so everybody can sign. Um, this is a folded over eight and a half by 11 sheet. And then I'm gonna put some type of mat behind it. I'm not sure if it's gonna be this color now. It might be a different color, but it'll end up being something like that. And then I'm gonna put the words somewhere on here, get well soon. And then everyone in the team can sign and then they can include their monetary donations and that will be tomorrow's activity. So I might trim it down. I don't know, but that's, that's what I did. That's fantastic show. I, what a, what a great thing to do for somebody who's feeling really tough, you know? Yeah. And they, they really do need uh, the money too, because they don't have a breadwinner now that, Louis is in the hospital indefinitely. Yeah, yeah. That's a real. He's only forty-two. Yeah, I know. And well, that hits yeah. that hits home so many times for people uh, yeah. at that age that have heart problems. The the older you get, my understanding, if you have a heart problem, the better because there's something about the vessels that carry the blood, and when you have a heart attack in your forties it's worse than when you have a heart attack later on. So I I don't know. It just, it's awful. It's just awful to think that a family has to go through that. Yeah. And he was, his, uh, there was paramedics there on the other team who didn't, who resuscitated him. Or well, even not well, made that's it for this week. Um, Shell will figure out, what she plans on doing about next week, whether we'll have a stream or not. I will be back the following week for sure, so we'll figure something out for that. And we'll get those things posted for you so that you know and get the notifications should you be following and um, on our list of subscribers and get our notifications. And to do that, you just have to click that little bell. <laughs> so... Anyway, I want to thank you all for having been here live with us and yep. those that um, are joining us later. We thank you also. And um, be sure to give a thumbs up, leave a comment or question below if you have it, and we'll get back to you. And that's it for us. And bye bye. And happy Easter, everybody. Oh, yes. Happy Easter and April Fool's Day. Okay. <laughs> so long, guys. Bye. Bye bye.